in an interaction I had with civil society organizations and other public advocacy groups in November last year. We had a broad-based discussion on issues of governance reform and how we can strengthen our democracy and restore faith in our constitutional governance and the rule of law. A theme that kept recurring during this meeting was the issue of campaign financing and its link to corruption and influence peddling in government. This topic, I believe, is very close and dear to the hearts and minds of many Ghanaians. I do not have all the answers, but it is my expectation that as a key stakeholder in Ghana's political space, my comments on this issue will elevate the public discourse on the matter and hopefully lead to necessary reforms in this area. Well, a study by the Center for Democratic Development mentions that uh, a political party and then presidential candidates will need up to $100 million uh, to prosecute a very vibrant campaign. So that's the issue that former president is hoping uh, to get a solution to. Listen to him proffer some proposals. In recent times, some financing of political campaigns has come from illegal activities, and I think Dr. Asante referred to that, such as illegal mining, oil bankering, fraudulent businesses, procurement deals in the award of contracts, and among others. The CDD study even reported that there could be a strong association between financing of political parties and organized crime in Ghana. This is indeed worrying. Worrying because it has the potential of mortgaging our governance system to criminals. If that happens, our democracy will be gradually turned into a plutocracy, a plutocracy, a country ruled indirectly by only a few wealthy individuals. On government support for funding political parties, some have argued that the only funding that may be advanced to parties and cannot be concealed in secrecy is public funding of these parties. This refers to government giving financial resources or indirect assistance to political parties. As mentioned, in the absence of such support and given the huge cost of political activities, wealthy party financiers take over as political godfathers who determine electoral outcomes and all that follows it. And as I stated earlier, because of our current economic crisis, additional state financing may not be a viable option at this time. Even if that became an option in the future, I commend that we put in place an explicit public funding of political parties bill in a bipartisan and inclusive manner to regulate this phenomenon. I further recommend that should public funding of political parties be scaled up in the foreseeable future, then an independent and credible institution must be selected to administer the state resources advanced to political parties. In that regard, a sharing formula could be established to ensure fairness and specific disclosure requirements on beneficiary parties must be imposed. This must be complemented by auditing and publication of party accounts. 